This is the Apache Giraffe homepage. From here, we'll navigate to the Quick Start Guide. It gives instructions on setting up Apache Giraffe, starting with setting up Apache Hadoop, as well as downloading and building Giraffe from source. You'll notice the Giraffe depends on a pre-1.0 Hadoop release, Hadoop version 0.20.203.0 Release Candidate 1. This video is based on the Quick Start Guide, but deviates in a few places, so let's get started. We'll start by downloading Oracle VirtualBox for OS X. Next, we'll download Ubuntu Server. We'll use Server rather than Desktop because we don't need to use the UI on our virtual machine. The UI actually takes a lot of resources away from our virtual machine, and we don't want that slowing us down. We'll also download the latest version of Java 8. Be sure to select Linux 64-bit. Finally, we'll download the proper version of Hadoop. This video runs for about 15 minutes, but I sped up the video during downloads, progress bars, or other non-actions. So if you're following along at home, this will take somewhere between an hour or two to complete. When VirtualBox is done downloading, we'll start installing it. By and large, we're going to stick with the default options, but I'll let you know when we deviate. Now that it's installed, we're going to start it up. The first thing we're going to do is create a new virtual machine. We'll name it Giraffe, and we're going to select for the type Linux and make sure that the version is Ubuntu 64-bit. My machine has 8 gigs of RAM, so we're going to select 4 gigs of RAM for our virtual machine. Next, we're going to set up the hard drive. Most of the defaults are fine. However, I like to select a fixed size hard drive because I've had issues in the past with dynamically allocated drives. I'll select 15 gigs of hard drive space just to be sure we won't run out. Next, it's time to install Ubuntu. Since it's a virtual machine, we're going to put the ISO file in the virtual CD tray. We'll go ahead and select from Downloads where we downloaded the Ubuntu server. When we start the server, the bootable CD will start the install process. Again, most of the default options here are going to be fine. So we'll select our language, our location. That's all fine. Next is the keyboard. We'll just select the defaults. And unfortunately, the Ubuntu install process has a lot of intermediate action screens, so you kind of have to babysit a little bit. We'll name our machine Ubuntu. Default's fine. Next, we'll create a user. 
We're going to name it HD user. We're also going to set the password as HD user just for convenience. It is a weak password, but that's okay. We also don't need to encrypt our home directory. Time zone, just fine. Here it's asking us to set up the hard drive, and again, we're just going to select the default options. In my case, there's no proxy. We're not going to bother with installing automatic updates just because this is a throwaway machine. Here, you should select Open SSH Server. I neglected to do so, so I'm going to have to do it again later. Installation is done. We're going to restart the machine. Boot up's good, so now we'll log in with HD user again. And remember the password is also HD user. And there we go. The first thing I have to do is install OpenSSH server since I missed it during the install process. Next, we're going to set up passwordless SSH into localhost. This starts with creating a public private key. Passwordless SSH will allow some of the Hadoop commands to work properly. When setting up the key pairs, we can just use the defaults and leave everything blank. Finally, we'll just set the permissions correctly on the folder. Let's test it out. Okay, seems to work. Next, we're going to configure port forwarding on our virtual box. Our network settings are configured to use NAT, which is just fine for our use case. If we wanted the virtual box to be visible on an another network, we do something else. The first port we're going to set up is port 2022 on our host mapped to the guest port 22. 22 is the port the SSH server is listening for. We can't map host ports lower than 1000, I believe. Thus, we're going to use 2022. We're also going to set up some ports for the web apps that Hadoop uses. We will do this so that we can view those web apps from our host browser. The port forwarding changes take effect immediately, so we don't need to restart our server. We're going to open up our terminal and our host and try to log in to our virtual machine. And it worked! Exit back out to the host and copy Java 8 into the Ubuntu machine. Also copy over Hadoop. Again, don't forget to specify the port, this time with a capital dash P. Now we'll log back into the virtual machine and unpack the files we just copied over. We'll start with Java. After it's done unpacking, we'll modify the .bashrc file. 
setting Java Home, and adding it to the path. We'll verify that it's set up correctly by running java-version. Looks good. Next, we're going to tackle Hadoop. We'll start by creating the directory we want to put it into. This is under user local Hadoop. Notice we had to create sudo, use sudo when we created it, and the permissions are set to root root. We don't want to have to use sudo every time we create or modify something inside that directory, so we're going to create a new user group called Hadoop, and we're going to add the HD user to that group. Now we're just going to change the permissions on the Hadoop folder, and there we go. Now HD user can modify the Hadoop directory without using sudo. So now we'll unpack Hadoop into that folder we just created for it. After we're done unpacking Hadoop, we'll again open the .bashrc file and set Hadoop home. We'll also set this property, which will force Hadoop to use IP version 4. Now we'll configure Hadoop, starting with coursesite.xml. Hadoop.temp.dir is where the name node, secondary name node, and data node store temporary files, and we'll need to set it to a directory Hadoop can access, that is, not one that's owned by root. Next, we'll add properties to the mapred-site.xml. Giraffe requires at least four mappers, so we'll have to set mapred.tasktracker.map.task.maximum and mapred.map.tasks to four. Finally, we'll add hdfs-site.xml. We'll set dfs.replication to one, making this a pseudo-distributed single node cluster. The final steps are to format the name node and go to conf slash hadoop.env.sh to set Java home again. And all that's left is to boot up Hadoop. Start DFS is the command that starts the name node, secondary name node, and data node. Next, we'll use start mapred to start the tra uh, task tracker and job tracker. Now let's demonstrate that Hadoop is configured correctly by running a word count example. The text that we'll be running the, this on is Sunzi's Art of War. We'll download the file from the internet, then copy it into HDFS. Next, run the following Hadoop command to run the word count problem. This kicks off a MapReduce job. We can track its progress on the various web apps Hadoop provides, over the ports that we opened up earlier. When the task completes, we can examine the output files. Notice that this is a list of the occurrences of each word in the text mapped to its count. Now that we're sure Hadoop is set up and running correctly, we can get down to getting giraffe. The first thing to do is to apt-get git, and then to apt-get maven. Be sure that maven is a version 3 or higher. Next, we'll pull down the latest giraffe from its GitHub repo. For convenience, we'll set giraffe home in our .bashrc file. Finally, we'll run maven package skipping tests to build giraffe. Be aware that this step takes a long time. When it's done, we'll create this input file. This is a representation of a graph where in each line, the first value is the vertex ID. The second is the distance from the source vertex, and next is a list of vertices it's connected to and the weights of those connections. So for example, vertex 0 is connected to vertex 3 with a weight of 3. Notice that Giraffe works on directed graphs. Giraffe can handle many different input formats. 
copy the source file into HDFS. Next, we'll run this giraffe command. The jar with dependencies means that we don't have to mess with the class path. Everything's taken care of for us. Notice that we're running the simple shortest paths computation. The VIF stands for Vertex Input Format, which has to match the type of the input file we wrote. The VIP stands for Vertex Input Path, which points to a location in DFS. And VOF is a vertex output format telling Giraffe how we'd like to see the output data. Finally, the OP is the output path where the data is stored in DFS when Giraffe is done. Let's fire away! Finally, we can look at our output and marvel.